What's up guys, we're back again with another video. And today we're going to be looking at the Village Market plugin. This is going to be a full tutorial including everything that you can do because this is a really, really great plugin. So for this, if you are looking to just learn it all, all in one, then just follow the whole video. Whereas if you're looking for a certain part of the Villager plugin, how to configure, set up shops, rent or buy shops, then simply use the chapters in the description or skip along the time bar to find the section for you. The shop will enable you to give free stuff to your players, time limit, how long they can have before each transaction, create shops that you can rent with different slots and prices and for different timings, shops that players can buy, charge their own money and collect money that they've earned during the period they've been away. You can also set up administrator shops that will provide whatever item, no matter what it is, without any stocking required. Along with this it also provides you the ability to execute a command upon buying something, such as teleporting your player to another place. And last but not least, players can also buy spawn eggs, which then they can put somewhere within their land. Sounds pretty good, so let's get into it. First things first, we're going to need ourselves a server. So before we upload any plugins, we are going to stop the server. You are going to need three plugins for this, which I'll leave the links down in the description. First, of course, is Villager Market itself. And that will work for 1.8 to 1.19. Next up, we have Essential X. This is simply for the economy, and you can choose another economy plugin to use instead. And lastly, it's going to be Vault. I do usually choose the bucket version, and I use a paper server, so you can use either Bucket or Spigot. The Bucket one seems to work better currently, so I'm going to be using the Bucket. To download these, simply go ahead to the download area. With Essentials on the top right, Right, go to download and then just download the core essential x and finally for village market you can go to the village market download now with them all downloaded you can upload them using your ftp file access however where i've got multiple files i'm going to be uploading them using filezilla once connected to my server and i've got my server files on the right hand side on the left i'm going to find where i've downloaded them so i've moved them onto my desktop over here and i can see that here we have essentials vault and villager markets i'm going to open up my plugins folder where currently i have another plugin which i actually forgotten about just go ahead and delete this so again i'm just going to select villager market vault and essentials i'm going to drag them over to the right Right hand side. This will now put our shop plugin, our economy plugin, and vault to handle the economy. Now it's simply a case of starting it back up and we've now installed everything that we need to get this working. Time to log back into Minecraft. So now let's log into the multiplayer server and if you haven't got a server to play on already, check out my universal server. It's pretty cool. We've got a number of players already. Shops are set up. It's simple survival for everyone, whether it's Java or Bedrock. So do check that out. I'll leave my website link and the Discord in the description so you can go ahead and find the IP for that to join. Either way, let's go on to the test server and I did check the plugins. You can check if the plugins are live and enabled by doing a forward slash plugins in game or just plugins on your console for your multicraft. Oh, looks like I've spawned in water. So now let's check out the main commands for this. First of all, like I just mentioned, if you do plugins, you can check that all three plugins like Essentials, Vault and Villager Market are installed. Next up, how do we actually create shops? Well, that's going to be VM for the main command. And after that, you can see that we have a variety of different options here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go through creating the admin shop and then creating a player shop, which just stands there where you are. So what we're going to do is we're going to do VM. We're going to do create space. And this is where you can choose whether it's an admin shop or a player shop. First of all, we're going to do admin, then we're going to do space, and this is where we're going to choose how many slots that we have in the actual buy shop. You can choose one to six, and I do believe it's the rows, so you get all six rows if you choose six, or you can choose infinite to have a shop with infinite amount. In this case, we're going to do two, and for the admin shop, that's it. You can just press enter, and it will create the shop right there and then. So with an admin shop, you can go and set it up, and whatever items you put in here to buy, sell, or command, they will be unlimited, and you don't need to restock them. We'll be going through how to stock the items shortly. Next up, if we want to make a player shop, this is going to be a shop that someone can either buy or rent. First of all, let's do this to buy. So we're going to stand where we actually want the shop. I'm going to do VM, create again. This time we're going to choose player. This is where it gets a little bit different. So first of all, we're going to choose how many slots they have for their shop again, or how many rows. So let's say they want three rows. Next up, we choose the stock amount. This is how many rows of stock they can have. So we're going to give them three rows of stock, and this is how they can stock all their shop. So let's press three. Now at this point, if you want them simply to buy this shop, we can just now put a price. So let's say we want to spend 500 pounds if you want to buy this shop. If we press enter, it's going to create the shop right there. And it's going to say shop available very nicely. If we right hand click it, you can see that you can buy the shop for five pounds, and this will shop will be yours for never i know i know it doesn't make sense it basically means that it you know it's yours forever it's got 26 shop slots and 26 storage slots very nice so now people can buy these shops wherever they're stood right there next let's check out how to make a rentable shop so again standing on the place that i want to do this and we can actually give them a village egg which we'll go through next we're going to do a forward slash vm create again we're going to go to player 
choose how many shop slots they should have, how many storage slots they should have. After that, we're gonna choose how much the shop is. So let's say 500 in your currency for this instance. This is why you need a currency plugin installed as well. And then we can choose the time. As you can see, M stands for minutes, H stands for hours, S stands for seconds, and D for day. So if I wanted it to be for two days, we can do 2D. If I wanted it to be for 12 hours, we're gonna do 12H. So for this shop, we're gonna create a player shop that they can rent with the two shop slots, two storage slots. It's gonna cost them 500 and they're gonna rent it for 12 hours. If we press enter, we can see the information is also displayed there. That it's gonna be yours for 12 hours, gonna cost 500. You've got 17 shop slots and storage slots. Very, very cool. Now there is another thing that you can do here, which is actually give shop eggs. So the players can take the eggs and then put them in one of their lands. First way to do it is by doing a command and that's gonna be VM item give. And this is where we can start to fill in the spaces. So player, I could do myself. Secondary, you need to choose the shop size. Let's say two again. Let's say for storage size, we also want to do two. And then again, you're gonna finish off with how much it's going to cost them. For instance, 500. Now we can press enter. And as you can see, we now have the villager egg shops. A better way to actually do this is selling it through maybe one of your admin shops. And to do that, we're gonna dice into a bit of how you can set it up before we properly get into it. So if we go to edit the shop front and then we put um, an item in there which we want to use, click it in there and it's gonna ask you how many of them you want to sell. If we press one, that's gonna sell one item per transaction. And that's how much it's gonna be worth. So let's say 200 is gonna be how much you're gonna to have to pay per transaction. As you can see, amount one, price 200. If we click on this, we can now go to command. If we click this one right here, it's gonna go buy, buy, sell, and then finally command. If we click on the little command block button, it's gonna ask us to put in the command. This is where we can also put the last command that we done. This doesn't need a forward slash, it's gonna be VM item give. Instead of player or player name, you're gonna do a percentage mark, player percentage mark, and then the same command. If we press enter, we're now gonna see that we're gonna receive one for the price of 200, and that's gonna give us a spawn egg. If I click it now, we don't actually have enough money, so let's just give ourselves some money. If you don't know uh, with essentials, it's eco, give, player name, and then the amount of money that you wanna give them. So let's just give ourselves $400, preview shop, and then see if that works. And as you can see, we now have our create villager shop. If we click it down, we're now gonna be able to go ahead and create our shop just like that. So first of all, let's go through how to actually edit your shop. You can edit your villager type or how your villager looks like by clicking this little spawn egg. As you can see, it gives you all the normal mob types. So let's just go with toolsmith and as you can see, they instantly change. If I right hand click again, we can go to change name. Here we can type in the name without any forward slash. So I'm gonna put in shop one. You can also preview what your shop looks like and then experiment with buying or selling here. So we're gonna right hand click on our villager and we're gonna to go to edit shop front. This is where you can add everything to your shop. Let's say I now want to add a deep slate iron ore. We're gonna click on there and we're gonna place it in. It's gonna ask us how many we want to buy or sell each transaction. So for this time, we're gonna put one. We wanna sell one per transaction. Now it's gonna ask us for the price in the chat. So open up your chat again, and we're gonna put 50 for $50. So one of these is gonna cost one for $50. And although it says sell there, that actually means buy, because it's the other way around, the villager is selling it, so the player will be buying it. Now let's say that you want to change this. To change this, just click on the item. It's gonna bring you to this little screen here. It's gonna show you what item you have, the amount that you sell per transaction, what the mode is, which you can change by clicking. Left clicking will make it buy. Click again, you can set up a buy and sell. And then click again, you can set up the command. To set up the command like earlier, we can click on that and then just put in the command without any forward slash. Next up, we have the price that you can also change by clicking and then changing it in the chat bar. And you can also change the limit and the cooldown per transaction. To change the limit, you can simply click on this, set it to zero for unlimited, or you can set it to any limited number. So they can only buy two per transaction at the most. And then if you want to limit the cooldown, we can also click this and then put a cooldown with a time scale. So H for hours, S for seconds, and for minutes. So we're going to do per 24 hours, as you can see it's shown there. If I put this back to buy at the moment and we go to preview the shop, you're going to see that I probably don't Okay, I do have enough money, so I've now brought two of them. However, if I want to change it, so I now want to sell these two items back to the server, we can go on to sell. We can go back onto the item over here. Click this to say buy, so the villager is going to be buying from the player. Now when we go to the shop, we can actually sell it to the shop right there. It's going to be per increments of one. Obviously, I'll set your sell price lower than the buy price. The same goes if you set up your player's shop. First of all, you're going to need to buy it, and then you're going to get this choice over here. Currently, as, as default, the money will go straight to you, and you won't need to collect it. However, when we go through the conference, I'll show you how you can also enable that. So then you get a little collection here. So rather than it coming to you straight away and when you log in, the money is already in your balance, you can get the people to come back to their shop and actually collect the balance with a little gold ingot here. Everything is gonna be exactly the same as an admin shop. Apart from you have to sort out your own storage. So much the same, we're gonna sort out by putting an item here to sell. We're gonna sell one and we're gonna sell it for 
20, but as you can see currently zero are in stock. So if we go back, we can now go to our storage and this is where you can put the actual items to store. If we look back at the shop now, we have one in stock. Very cool, and that is how to set up your shops. Let's just go through another few commands before we actually go to the config. Now to move your shop is a very easy command. We're gonna be doing a forward slash VM move press enter and then you can right click the shop that you want to move and then simply come over to another block and then move it over here by right clicking on that block and then move over really nicely. We can also clone if we do a VM clone. We're gonna right click but just be aware that it will clone where your feet are. This doesn't matter for now because we can move it but if we right click on there we're gonna see that we've now cloned the shop. And now to move him simply do a forward slash VM move, right click and then move him to where you want to move the clone shop to. If you want to delete a shop we're gonna do a VM remove, press enter and then right hand click on the shop that you want to remove. You can also set up trust with your shops by doing a VM forward slash trusted. You can then add or remove the players that are trusted with your shop. I'm going to just go ahead and add myself and then press enter. Now you click on the shop that you want to add the trust to. So let's just go ahead and add it to this one. As you can see player added, if you want to then remove them, simply change the add to remove, press enter, click on the shop that you want to remove them from and that's going to remove the trust for the other player if you want to run the shop together. And finally before we go into the config, one of the really annoying commands that took me ages to find out which might be helpful for you which is how to execute a command on a player. Now as previously mentioned you can specify any player player's name as percentage mark, player percentage mark, and that will then aim the give to that particular player. And that's going to be with a not so simple execute command. Now I say not so simple because I come from a bedrock background so to me it seems a little different. So anyway we're going to right hand click on our villager and this does work really well for actually TPing the players for so they can buy an amount let's say for a ticket and you can then TP them around. So let's go to edit shop front, I'm going to use this iron ore right here, put this, we're going to use it one time, let's say it's going to cost them 166 bucks, then click on the item once more, once it's up there, we're going to click this mode to buy, ah my bad, <laughs> this is only done on admin shops. So let's come over to the admin shop over here and follow the same process, I'm just going to upload or put this one iron ore, we're going to do it one time and I'm going to charge 12 bucks. Once that's done, click on the item, I'm going to come to the mode over here and swap this over. So third time lucky, this is the admin shop. So right hand click, go to the edit shop front. Let's put down this iron ore right here. We're going to do it for an amount of one, price of 12. Click on the item, swap the mode over to command. Click on the little command over here and we want to do this command. So execute as at P at at S run and then the command that you wanted to run at the closest player. So as I'm the closest player, it's going to be a TP at P, and then you can either put the coordinates. So if your spawn coordinates are this, for instance, you can just put in the spawn coordinates, then press enter. Now if a player goes to click this, they will then be teleported to, well, apparently somewhere in the ground. Great, with that all done, let's go check out some of the config and how we can change things around. So before you do change any things around, you don't have to do this, but I do recommend just stopping the server first. Next up, we're gonna to go to files and then find your config files. You can either go, if you use Multicraft or Seekerhost, you can use that way, or you can also go to your FTP file access and access the files that way. Now you just gotta scroll through until we see a villager market one, which is gonna be right here, config.yml for the villager market, and click on this. Here you're gonna find a fair amount of config to help out with your shop. So let's start from the top. You have the villager market prefix, which is set between these quote marks over here, which is gonna be VM in some nice colors. Change that accordingly. Next up, if a player sells a shop, which they are able to do, if they do wanna get rid of it, what percentage are you gonna give them as a refund? Currently, or as default, it says 50%, so if they spent 100, they're gonna get 50 back. How often should a villager shop auto save? Again, currently it's set at 10. I've never felt the need to change this. So perhaps 10 is quite a good number. Next up you have all buyable player shops to a redstone block if the shop has an owner and to air if the shop is available for purchase. Currently set default to false, but you can have this true if you do want it um, to come up like that, just change the false to true. How often should redstone output from brought villagers update in seconds? It's set to 20 and I've never had a problem with that. Next up, you can set a tax to your server or your player's shops. Currently, it's set to zero. If you want to put a 20% tax, we can just put 20 right there. You can also change the currency symbol. So if you want to use pounds, for instance, we're going to just change that over to pounds. You can show the currency symbol before or after the worth. If you want to change this uh, currently or as default set to false, you can change this to true to have it set differently. Choose your maximum item price. So perhaps maybe you don't want that many big ticket items on your server. You can change this to a thousand so no one can put a price larger than a thousand for any item. Should the Activity log be saved when the uh, plugin restarts. Currently, it was default set to false, and we usually tend to leave it to false, otherwise, you end up getting a lot of log records, which will then increase the size of your server. 
Chat input used to cancel actions is cancel is cancel. Um, so that's if you do start to type a command for the VM, you can just do uh, put cancel in the uh, chat bar and it will just cancel the action. You can change this, you can put exit or anything like that. Next up, this is an important one. This is if you want your players to be able to collect the money. Now it's currently set to false, but if we change it to true on should players be required to collect the earned money in the edit shop GUI. If we set this to true, save it, start the server back up. Um, when you right click your shop, you're gonna get a little gold bar at the bottom and that will show how much money you've earned and to collect it you have to click that button. I prefer this method so people have to come back to their shops but that's completely up to you. Next up we have the per admin shop permission required which is currently set to false. I haven't dabbled too much in this bit so I'm not going to tell you anything which I don't really know. However I believe this is a way of getting the admin shops given to only certain people so by getting the uh, UUID for the admin shop by using the VM get ID command you can then set certain admin shops to certain admins. This is another important one will require villager market by shop to buy shops this is a permission right here so if you're using lucky perms or something like that and maybe you don't want everybody to be able to purchase a shop you can then change buy shop permission to true. Once it's true you will then have to give that particular group this permission right here so villager market dot buy underscore shop if they don't have this permission on their group or player they won't be able to buy a shop currently this is set to false so anybody can buy a shop we'll drop spawn egg when a shop created with a spawn egg is removed default set to true you can change that to false so it doesn't drop a spawn egg and you can also disable announcing new updates if you use it already you might see if there's a new update once you log in you see that message as an admin saying there's a new version please update and you can change that to true to disable it you can disable the law toggle button, change your language over, which is default set to English US. Some of the interesting things that you can do, obviously, first of all, name always displayed false. You can also set that to true, so it does always display the name. Killable also disabled because that would be really annoying if people kept killing your <laughs> villager shops, but you can change this to true as well. Next up, we have the AI, which is an interesting one. If we change this, an AI is set to default, so they just stand there. However, we can set this to true, so they actually move around like normal people. You can also set the custom profession. We're just going to leave it to none, but you can set it as anything you know stonework or whatever they are you can change custom names the maximum length of the name and of course add a back blacklist which i've had to cover up the words as i've just noticed i've had them words showing for a little bit so yeah any bad words here just put a dash space and then the actual word itself for the word that you want to blacklist plugin support settings this is where you can enable stuff like townie whether players can place the shop in wilderness or not or only allow um, them in plot shops Rent setting, you can set how many days they can maximum rent for and how often temporary uh, shops should be checked in seconds. You can actually change all the villager noises as well. So as you do stuff on the shop, you've probably noticed they've got some cool sounds and you can change these over. Currently, they're set like this. If you Google entity sounds, you can then grab some other ones and use them. Any of the default entity sounds will work. Last but not least, you can also blacklist items from the shop. Currently, we have dead bush that comes as default and you can just add any other item here that you don't want people to sell on your shop. Say for instance, TNT with the heads or anything like that. So guys, it's been a long one. Thanks for uh, coming along for the tutorial. I hope that's helped. I love this plugin and I use it on pretty much every server that I've had. For any more tutorials, head on over to JDog Official. You can find my Discord, the server that we play on, the Universal server, which will play for Java, Bedrock, loads of cool shops, land claim, and that's even for Bedrock, and an awesome spawn for you to get started with. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.